My name is Stuart Pym. I'm the Doris Duke Professor of Conservation Ecology at Duke University. Uh, my passion is preventing species from going extinct, which is happening far too often these days. Many of us love animals. But the story I have to tell today is the fact that we can love animals a little bit too much. Sometimes, because we care for animals, uh, we let them go into the wild and in places where they don't belong. I'm going to talk to two of my colleagues at Duke, Dr. Nicolet Cagle and Dr. Lucas Jopper. And we're going to be talking about Burmese pythons um, and how they are wreaking havoc in the Florida Everglades and how they potentially may be causing a lot of problems elsewhere. <laughs> I'd like you to tell me who you are and who your friend is. Alright, I'm Nicolette Cagle. This is my husband, Mark. And this is our boa constrictor, who we've named Boa. And we've had her for about probably 12 years. 12 years. And at first she was growing really fast, almost a foot a year. And now she's only grown two feet in the last five years. How 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 small was she when you first when you first got her? She's about four feet. And how um how often do you have to feed her? We normally feed her every three weeks or once a month, and she gets one rat or two rats. Why do you love why do you love a boa? Well, boas are fascinating creatures. They they are remarkable and primitive and it's great having a snake like this because so many people are afraid of them and there's really no reason to be afraid of them. They're strong and big and fast, but for the most part, they're even tempered. We like to take them to school groups and, and show him to children. I'd like you to tell me what the difference between a, a python and a boa is and, and why both of them seem to be very popular as pets. The main difference between pythons and boas, um, even though they're in different families, is that pythons lay eggs, so they're oviparous, while, while um, species in the bo boidae family, boas, they, they give birth to live young. And so while some people consider pythons a subfamily of boas, um, at the moment, they're, they're currently split and different, but those are the two main differences. We're looking at one of the most popular um, large snakes that people own as pets in the United States, the boa constrictor. And then the other, the other main um, mega snake, as I like to call them, is the Burmese python. Um, and both of these snakes can grow to extreme, extreme sizes. Uh, this, this guy right here is pretty much full grown. He might get a little bit bigger over the course of his life. But Burmese pythons can get up to um, 20 feet and, and large. Mark, as you guys already met, um, are some of the, uh, the good snake owners in the United States. They, they bought this, this boa when it was young, and it's now greater than 12 feet long, and they're still um, responsible owners. Unfortunately, many people who buy small boas and Burmese pythons, when they're maybe a foot or, or less, will... Um, become very surprised at how rapidly they grow and the maximum size that they can obtain. Or, and when they, when they do find these snakes to get that large, they often just release them into the wild. And unfortunately, in the case of the um, Florida Everglades, that happened with Burmese pythons, which, um, which found the Everglades much to their liking and, and their population has been expanding. So one idea that I think has quite a bit of credibility is the fact that we can potentially exploit the differences um, between boas and pythons. So like I was saying before, the difference between boas and pythons are that pythons <coughs> are, are, they lay eggs. And then because they lay eggs, they have to maintain um, contact with those eggs until the eggs hatch to keep them warm. And so pythons do something really um, unique called shivering. And they, they basically send muscle um, contractions up and down their body throughout the whole time that they're incubating their eggs to, to keep them warm and maintain a proper temperature. And uh, one of the ideas that I have is to simply set out um, quite a few heating mats out in the wild, in the Everglades, which would attract large female um, snakes during the birthing season and, and would allow uh, researchers and, and hunters to more efficiently uh, locate these animals. Other than paying for a bounty, a bounty on a python, um, is there anything we do with pythons? Can we, can we eat them? Can we use, uh, use their skins? Sure, so one of the interesting aspects of the Burmese python invasion in the Florida Everglades is they're actually a threatened species in their home territory. 
and they're listed um, as a CITES II threatened species, which, which puts really severe restrictions on the um, trade of any products um, from the Burmese python. And so that speaks to the large demand that there is for products that come from from animals like uh, the Burmese and, and boa constrictors. And unfortunately, while that really uh, does hurt their native populations, it does allow for um, potential in ways that we might be able to market the, the exploitation of these of these species. So somebody might um, might come in and, uh, and and make a do a trade in in, in python skins. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I was kind of beating around the bush there, but yes, yeah, some people, um, well, many people are very interested in, in products made from python skins, such as boots and jackets and purses and wallets, and um, as well, there's also a really large demand in certain segments of the population for python meat for, um, for cons human consumption. So that's a, a, an ingredient in, in, in traditional Chinese food? Yeah, it can be, yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but, <laughs> for, those, okay. for, those more, for those more adventurous in their eating habits than... Um, Many, many of us. Yeah, general shows tricking is uh, is um, yes, uh, exactly. somewhat uh, somewhat fam more familiar than um, yes. than than, uh, than python stir fry. I read um, somewhere that um, cooking python meat smells strongly of um, popcorn. So now, look. In addition to Burmese pythons, there must be other potential snakes that could be released into nice warm places like the Everglades. What are, What are the other species you think might might be at risk of getting loose? Oh, well, for the Florida ever you're looking at one of them. Um, and these guys are very similar to the Burmese python. The one thing about the Burmese python that worries me um, as an invasive species in the Everglades is that it basically can double dip from the ecosystem. It's extremely efficient. It's an extremely efficient predator in the water, and it's also an extremely efficient predator on the land. And that's really rare um, amongst top predators. And so that's that's really where um, it's having the most impact. And and but any snake this size or larger is is capable of, of being um, pretty having a pretty enormous impact on the landscape here. And how far how far do these could the Burmese python spread within the United States? So the Burmese python could actually spread um, through a significant portion of the United States. Um, snakes are really kind of flexible in their in their um, habitat requirements and the environmental conditions that they require basically because if it gets a little bit colder than they, than they would like they can kind of shut down in the in the colder seasons and as long as something doesn't um, seek them out and prey upon them when they're in that vulnerable state they can just make it through until the next season. So this could be a species that spreads extensively and cause a considerable amount of harm. Yeah, there's two things that I worry about with the Burmese python. The first is what I already said, it's extreme efficiency on both land and water as a predator. And the second thing is that the uh, Florida Everglades could truly be just the starting point for uh, the Burmese range expansion within the United States. Dr. Dropper, thank you very much. Thank you so much for bringing your snake. You're welcome.